Hello and welcome folks, Vizuku here. The discussion whether or not games can also be considered art is an old one. If you are desperate enough to go deeper into your Google search than page one, you'll find posts that are a decade old. And up to today, it's still a good question, since there will never be a definite answer that applies to each and every one all the time. For me personally, however, it is very clear that games are indeed art. I want to point out that calling something art doesn't mean that the thing is now more valuable to me. It's just a term for me to appreciate the work that went into it and also to justify my need to analyze games. And before you go into the comment section to change my mind, hear me out. What is art? First off, as always, we have to clear a few things. So, what is art anyway and how can we get a quick overview? Well, let's start like this. The definition what exactly art is, is ever changing throughout the time and culture. While, for example, in Europe, during the Middle Age, true art was considered beautiful objects that would bring honor to God or depict nature, God's greatest creation, with utmost care. Postmodern art is questioning everything and redefining rules as its most important goal and doesn't seem to obey any rules whatsoever. That means that postmodern art would very likely not have been considered art during the Middle Age. That is a rather extreme example, but that way it's easier to understand the point that how exactly art is understood is and always will be changing. And that is a good thing. Art is supposed to be changing. Yet, what does that mean for the individual? You can argue that every person can have their very own definition of what art is, and I think that's legit. So perhaps the question should be, what can we even consider art if we all have a different image of art? To help us with that, we are lucky enough to have laws in place in pretty much every country defining art. But even then, there is the question left, why did we even need those? Well, for a change, an easier question to answer. Depending where you live, the majority decides what is art. And this art has a special place and needs to be preserved. And also has a very special place when it comes to, for example, censorship in many Western countries. And while I personally don't agree that the simple term art is making the object we're talking about, in this case games, more important or valuable, I'm very interested in your takes on art. Mine is that art is every form of expression that allows the viewer to interpret the object from more than one angle. In this process, in my opinion, the intention of the artist isn't as important as what the audience can take from it. Art is representation of reality from a different perspective, without the need to justify its existence. In a way, that makes art a form of communication between the artist and all art that the artist had consumed in his life up to this point and the audience that also are the sum of all they have consumed and experienced. That sounded very abstract, so let's oversimplify that. For me, everything created by a group or a person is art. For me, this is art. And this. And this. And this. That doesn't mean all of that is good art, but that means everything has value and can, if you so desire, be analyzed and appreciated. The more you can analyze and appreciate the object, the more value it holds. So, the better art it is. However, I can't stress this enough, that is only my take. Even if you disagree, that is valid, because art is changing and can never truly be grasped. With all that said, what does that exactly mean for video games now? Video games as a form of art. Let's start by putting games into some context first. What is it about games that make them feel artistic anyway? Well, since we consider storytelling, music and visual arts, such as drawing, sculpting, etc. as art, how can something that combines all that not be art? I mean, just look at stunning games such as Child of Light, Gris, 
or, and I really mean it, GTA. Visually, they are all very pretty, in different ways of course, but all of them are pretty. And if there is art like this, that is undoubtedly considered art for being super realistic, how can we not celebrate a game for that? And if we have art like this, that is undoubtedly considered art for being super stylized, how can we not say the same thing about a game? Especially since a game does more than just that. Along with those visuals, we have music, or sometimes we don't, on purpose. Like in Limbo, for example, a game that thrives on the absence of music to create a certain atmosphere. Moreover, a game also combines storytelling with all that, sometimes as cryptic as in Dark, sometimes more on the nose as in the Pokemon games. And if it's so easy for the majority of people to call movies such as 1928 The Passion of Jean of Arc or a more recent example, 2019's Parasite Art, then why is it so difficult for us to do the same with games such as The Stanley Parable? All of them can be analyzed and by doing so reveal issues about reality and humanity. Especially non-mainstream games have a lot to say. Why do we downsize that in public media? Well, we're at the difficult questions again. There are multiple reasons for that, so let's have a look at them and unpack that. Games cannot be art because they are mainstream. That goes for a lot of things. Just like games, movies, various artists and music suffer from a very old image people still have of artists. The glorified, broke, poor and miserable artist that creates the best and most important art to the world. Though, unfortunately for them, no one is interested in their work yet. So they will ultimately die tragically without ever being successful during their lifetime. And that image is wrong for two reasons, I feel. First, if we ourselves glorify art no one cares about over art people actually do care about, then we will always make artists suffer on both sides. Successful artists that will be looked down upon because they are mainstream and unsuccessful ones who will feel as if the rejection of people would make their work even better, making them go through much more hardships. Second, we are feeding a culture that thrives on hating what is popular. My brother actually says it best when he states that everything that is successful mainstream has some sort of value. If it had nothing on it, it would not have the place it has. And that's true. There is something democratic about that. You don't have to agree with the majority all the time, but if the majority likes that, you're outvoted. However, in a way, I can even sympathize with the idea of the miserable artist, because I too agree that the most damaged people might have more inside them that needs to be expressed artistically, because there is no other way. However, I don't agree that that would make it more valuable. Whether or not art is valued is not as important, I feel. Everything that is created doesn't need to be justified. But when it comes to mainstream media, I don't think the question is, is this art? It's rather, is it good art? Just because it might be art, that doesn't mean that it's good, especially not for everyone. Art is supposed to be subjective and your personal opinion doesn't make art better or worse for another person. Everyone decides for themselves. So I gotta admit, this point was not only about games, but about mainstream media in general. But I wanted to get this off my chest while I was at it. And it does apply to games a lot more than to movies or other media. Media, I feel. Games cannot be art because they are commercial. That point aligns very well with the one before. There is the argument in the room that art can only be art if the creator created it without the intent to earn money. And I strongly disagree. If you're good at something and if you're able to create beloved and admired objects of any kind, why should you do that for free just to amuse others? How is the artist supposed to survive? If that was true, there couldn't be any artists because they were busy 
practicing doing nine to five jobs to earn a living. They wouldn't be professionals and ultimately much less art. Because no matter how important art is for the world, for a person or whatever you want to insert here, if you cannot live, it's worth nothing. Do you think Michelangelo would have worked on the fresco in the Sistine Chapel if he wasn't paid? I don't think so. I think getting paid for your hard work is only natural. And art is a passion, sure. But the artist needs to make a living. After all, they're putting hard work and time into their art. That needs to be valued. An argument like that is only justifying the exploitation of artists that we are experiencing today. So for me, an argument like that cannot hold its ground. Games are made with the intent to sell, but they are still filled with the art of people. A triple A title like GTA that parodies social issues is no less of a caricature of life. There is a load to unpack, but there are also DLC, online modes and in-game purchases, which will be hard to defend as art, I know. But the thing is that even though I don't like that, that is also just the downside to all art that are hidden behind a paywall. I mean, why why do I have to pay to see the Mona Lisa, for example? There are and always will be people who do nothing to create the art but still be earning money with that. As long as we live in a society where people need to make the most out of their resources to earn as much money as possible, this practice is unavoidable. I don't like it, but artists need to make a living. And to be honest, if you could create something people would go nuts for and you could get rich, how many will actually not? do that. For every concerned ape kind of artist, there is going to be an EA kind of developer. Besides, just creating art is not all it takes. Someone needs to publish it. People need to see. Games cannot be art because they are the product of a group, not a single person. When I first heard someone say that, I was confused, to say the least. If we truly believe that, what would that leave us with? Imagine theatric plays with only one staff member. Imagine music with only one musician. Imagine the ballet of Swan Lake with only one dancer. And think about it, is the Sistine Chapel not art because more than one artist was involved? Is all that not art anymore too? Besides, that doesn't even apply to all games. Nowadays with the many indie titles, we have a lot of games that were actually really made by only one or two people. Just look at Stardew Valley for example, a game that conveys so many feelings and is well beloved. It was created, developed, designed and composed by only one person. So get a load of that! Games cannot be art because you can only interact with games the way the game was designed to be interacted with. Okay, that argument is a good one. But after some thinking, I don't think it holds up. Is a movie that you cannot watch backwards not art anymore? Because if you're saying that a game cannot be art because you cannot beat Greedfall without ever killing any other NPC, or because you cannot beat Telltale's The Walking Dead without moving at the start of the game, then that's the same to me. You are, to some extent, always, I mean, sometimes more and sometimes less, but still, always, walked through an experience. The backside of Starry Night of Van Gogh will not really add to the artistic value of the painting, does it? And you gotta admit that if you really think that through, games are even more art than the rest. Especially because you are far more free in how you experience the game than any other art. A movie won't change, no matter how often you rewatch it. A painting won't change, no matter how often you look at it. Or at least not objectively, everything you see was there before. But in games, every experience is unique. Did you ever watch a stream and the person is playing a game you're very familiar with, but now that you're not playing yourself, the gameplay looks alien to you, almost like as if you have never seen the game before. Well, that's because in a game, your options to interact with it are much more varied. You can make choices, you can play the entire main story in a complete rush, but then all of a sudden decide to just stand around and have a look at some animations for a couple of minutes, and that 
all adds to your very own personal experience of the game. You can interact with the game far more interpersonal than with a painting, for example. You are, in a way, also part of the game. Without you playing, there would not be a game. And that's, for me, the main reason why games are actually the ultimate form of art. Art is a form of expression, therefore also a form of communication. But communication is the most successful and the most satisfying when both sides are equally parts of it. Arguably, games are not quite there yet, but for sure closer than movies, paintings or music alone are. Furthermore, you have the aspect of hacking, modding or even breaking games open to experience the game exactly how it was not intended. And you'd still be able to get information, input and could even analyze your findings to find new meaning to the game. Games cannot be art because they are easy and enjoyable. Okay, okay, I present to you the most ridiculous argument. Art apparently needs to be painful, boring or uncomfortable in some way. And yeah, sometimes that's right. Some art is painful, boring or uncomfortable. Sometimes all three of that. And games acknowledge that, presenting you with a variety of uncomfortable scenes, forcing you through experiences or choices to do exactly that. But however, just like there is art that is beautiful to look at, such as Van Gogh's flower paintings, there are games that are just accessible. But would you call those flower paintings less of art because they are not painful to look at? Besides that, we have a whole array of different arts. Some are beautiful, pretty and easy to understand. But then again, we also have art that is very uncomfortable, dark and the same goes for games as well. We have dark souls that by no means can be called easy, but it doesn't need to be. Art doesn't need to be anything. Imagine all art would need to be boring or painful or uncomfortable. What would that leave us with? Art doesn't need rules like that. Art is art. So at the end of the day, I think I made my point very clear that art is pretty much fully subjective and gives no shit about rules. Art does what art wants, so there is no reason for games not to be art. There is this old post I found during my research called Games Will Never Be Art. I've linked it in my description if you wanted to give it a look. But be warned, in this rant about video games, the author states that no one in or out the field has has ever been able to cite a game worthy of comparison with the great poets, filmmakers, novelists and poets. But honestly, from all arguments I've ever heard, this got to be the weakest. I mean, is he implying that art needs to rival another? Does the fact that Goethe's Iphigenia of Taurus being a masterpiece make all other literature obsolete? And if so, who decides? And who has won the big art contest we are in? Apparently. Aside from the very upsetting side of the statement that diminishes the need and worth of modern art that came after the so-called great poets, filmmakers, novelists and for some weird reason poets again. Which, by the way, is not only very arrogant, but also far from the truth. Gris is a masterpiece when it comes to games. It depicts the stages of grief in an astounding way. From colors symbolizing different stages of grief to level design mirroring the emotional state one has to endure during the coincided grief stage. The game is filled with feelings that can rival any surreal painting that also depicts grief. And also look at video quotes such as definition of insanity is insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again expecting oh, shit. shit to change in the end what separates a man from a slave money power no a man chooses a slave obeys. Kurodo a zaininda. Bushini Sakara will tummy or sosomokas. Honore o mamur tamedes. Dokudeka. Mokono 
手に渡ったのだぞあのままでは民を犬死にさせていました誉れを捨てたな誉れが何だとおっしゃる They were leverage. They were hostages. When you take the gloves off, you get blood on your hands, Kyle. That's how it works. Where do we draw the line, Esa? You draw the line wherever you need it, Sergeant. If your life were the prize, would you kill the innocent? Would you sacrifice your humanity? We all make choices, but in the end, our choices make us. Okay, that was a load, wasn't it? Don't you think that those quotes can hold their ground? They inspired thousands and without a doubt can spark discussion and give insight to a deeper philosophical question or emotional state. They make us question things and that is what art is about. Art is supposed to change your perspective, question things, give you new insights or new perspectives. Sometimes art is a mirror so that you can see what lies deep inside yourself. Sometimes Sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes art is a window showing us insight to an artist's mind. But in any case, I don't think that art is bound to a medium. Maybe the greatest art of all is making the best out of the medium that you're using. With all that said, maybe now I have in fact changed your mind? If not, let me know in the comments down below what you think about games being art. I'd love to hear more insight and discuss this matter more in detail. I had great fun researching and making this video, so I hope you enjoyed too and got a thing or two to think about. If you're curious now, I upload new gaming related videos every Wednesday and I stream every Saturday over at Twitch. I would love to see you around. So thank you very much for everything, especially listening. And until we see each other next time, have it good. Bye!